Hello there. Hi, how's it going? It's an absolute pleasure to finally meet you. My name is Cece. Hi, Cece. I'm the host of Zeal Fujoshi, and I am beyond excited about our conversation today. My podcast is all about celebrating the world of anime and manga that speaks to the hearts of Fujoshis and Fudanshis just like me. <laughs> At Zeal Fujoshi, we're all about the joy of diving deep into the stories, the characters, and the creative expression that makes our fandom vibrant. Our listeners are avid fans of your incredible work. And in this interview, we want, I want them to have the opportunity to get to know you as a person. So, wonderful listeners, I am your host, Cece, again, and I am beyond excited to welcome you to another captivating episode. Today, we have a true gem in the world of voice acting, the incredibly talented KG Tang, with his dynamic performances and dedication to his craft. He has become a shining star, captivating our hearts and minds, in the realm of animation and beyond. Hey, KJ. Hello, happy to be here. Before we dive into the heart of this conversation, can you please give us a quick introduction about yourself? Sure. Um, hi, I'm KJ Tang. I'm a voice actor in Los Angeles, California, and I've been doing this for around 16, 17 years. Um, I graduated with a degree in theater from college, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get my hands on whatever acting I could possibly get my hands on in Los Angeles just happened to be voiceover. So I fell face first into it, blind luck, you know, got really, really lucky. And you know, I, I fell in love with it and been doing it ever since. Beyond the characters you've masterfully embodied, we're thrilled to explore the person behind those iconic voices. Can you share what is your favorite anime or video game? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I've, got, I've got a big list. <laughs> uh, my favorite of all time, it has to be the when I was a little kid and I was first starting to discover anime, um, I of course watched the you know Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball, all that stuff, right? Um, but back then I didn't really understand that it was anime, right? So the first show that I sought out as an anime was the Slayer series. All the way back in there, there's Slayer, Slayer's Next, Slayer's Try, and for me, even today, it's my favorite show because it, it has all those really nice memories of when I was a kid and discovering anime for the first time. Um, favorite video game though, I'm I'm a big me and my wife are big fighting game players, so we love Street Fighter. <laughs> like, we're a big Street Fighting household, you know. So we're always beating each other up in the video game at home. And it's a lot of fun. So a lot of my listeners who are Fujoshis and Fudanshis are a big fan of you as Saru Gojo. And can you share a funny or memorable moment from a recording session that still makes you laugh about your role as Gojo. Oh yeah, I mean recently in fact we had a um, season two just started and you know it explores uh, Gojo and Gato's past as teenagers, right? Um, there's there's an interesting process called localization as we, we take it from the Japanese into the English, right? And sometimes because of the lip flaps, uh, sometimes lines have to change, right? So there are certain manga panels from JJK I feel like that it would be really sinful to change and one of those things happened in this recording. So there's a panel that Gojo says, you crying, right? And the localization because of the flaps had to change it to, are you crying, right? And I saw that, I was like, no, no, we can't, we can't possibly change it. So um, we, we tried to massage it out as, uh, as much as we could. So we stretched out the you crying to, you crying, you know? Um, and, it, and it fit the flaps okay. And so we decided to leave it in. But then the fandom really took to it, right? They really, really liked it. So they started tagging me in all these TikToks of like these remixes and re-edits of that scene. That was a really fun moment. Like my wife is constantly being like, look at what you did. I'm like, oh, it looks great. You know, so, so we have like a lot of fun little moments like that in, in anime. And I was really, you know, I was really humbled and honored that I was able to be a part of one of those. I'm pretty sure you get a lot of tags for your... Uh, season two of JJK. <laughs> yeah, I've been getting a lot of it yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, even for me, like my husband, my husband is sick, is sick and tired of me sending him all of that <laughs> and reels of it. Like, well, tell him I apologize. I, you know, no, I feel, he's, like, I feel he's, responsible. He's but. absolutely fine. He's used to it, but <laughs> I absolutely love the KFC scene. Oh my god, I'm just so happy they included it. That was yeah. amazing. K K I C, right? Yeah. The K I C. So. <laughs> 
How did you react when? Did you see the response that KFC did? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever is running their social media account is like yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about um, your voice acting legacy. What was the most challenging role that you've ever portrayed? Oh, oh, I, I remember this vividly. Um, this was back when I was a little younger. I didn't have full control of how I was screaming and all that stuff, right? Um, in voiceover, when you do big like fighting or action stuff, right? Um, you really shouldn't be yelling from the throat, right? And I was too young to really keep that in mind. I knew it, but I didn't know it, you know what? So I was part of this game called This Sky of Five, and I was playing a character named Red Madness. And in voiceover, we have a loudness scale from one, which is kind of like a stage whisper, to two, you and I talking right now, yeah. three, across the room, right? And four, you're falling off a cliff, you're on fire, you know, you're screaming, all that stuff, right? Red Magnus operated at all times at a 3.5 the whole time, right? And Disgaea is like a hundred hours something JRPG. So we had 40 plus hours of recording just for Red Magnus. And it was the only job where after I was finished with it, I spit, I spit up blood. Like I, I coughed up a little bit of red and I, and I discovered I hurt myself really badly. So. Nowadays, I would probably approach that very differently or even just not take that job, you know? Yeah. So it was it was like a big learning curve for me. That's good. Hopefully you don't get those. Yeah, fingers crossed. Right? <laughs> um, as of right now, what excites you the most about your current projects and what can fans look forward to? Oh, man. Um, so I, I'm excited by what I've always been excited by in voiceover, which is just the acting aspect of it, right? In my mind, voiceover is like the purest form of storytelling in acting, right? All my on-camera friends, I'm always really jealous because they have this huge toolkit to tell a story. They have their faces, they have their bodies, you know, they have the camera, right? Yeah. And all of that comes into the storytelling. But us, we only have this, right? So we have to take all of that stuff and put it straight into here. And that challenge is like my favorite part of voiceover. Um, being able to tell a story efficiently in no matter what kind of circumstance, you have to be a good actor no matter if you're throwing fireballs in a video game or if you're breaking up in front of a KFC. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you have to... That's the image. Oh, still dude. Gets it's, it's, it's devastating. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's, I, I, that's what keeps me going as a voice actor, the challenge of like finding that nice rhythm, being able to portray the story in no matter what medium you're in. And it, that really keeps me going as an artist. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, adding into that, um, what is your favorite part of being a voice actor in this industry? My favorite part? Okay, so it's changed a little bit, right? My favorite part used to be, because I'm kind of an introvert, my favorite part was I could do this job and still go to Ralph's and not be bothered, right? <laughs> like, um, but that's changed a little bit because of Did JJK. Because of JJK. Yeah, because of JJK. <laughs> now, like, I get random people stopping me in the grocery aisle and be like, Go, Joe! Like, I'm like, oh no! Like, I just want to buy orange juice. Like, <laughs> you know. So, you know, like, my favorite part is disappearing a little bit. But you know, I, I still have. We just talked about my second favorite part, which is just you know being able to do the job and uh, exploring the craft and getting better at the acting thing. Yeah, yeah I bet your your role as Gojo has completely changed your your life right now. Even in my family, your role as Gojo has changed my, <laughs> oh my, my dynamic in my family. I am fighting with my younger niece who thinks that you are her husband. Oh my god. And I'm like, no. He's my husband. <laughs> Well, I, you know what? Can I tell you? My my um my wife does not make it easier. Okay, she throws me under the bus constantly. She has a Gojo purse, and she has like Gojo apparel, and it's like she's fishing for it. You know, whenever we she go out together, exactly. So she's like, she's sitting. We're at a restaurant. She's she's waiting. She's waiting for someone to say something. You know, yeah. like I'm just sitting there going like, oh god, here we go. I can't <laughs> imagine that. Like, if I were to see your wife on the restaurant, I'd say, oh my god, you love Gojo too, and your wife is probably thinking. Oh yeah, do you know this is my exactly, husband? exactly. Yeah, this she's waiting. She's waiting for that exact hook, you know. <laughs> oh my, my god! Goodness. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I love it. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Um, without revealing any spoilers, KG, um, can you tease us about any upcoming projects that you're involved in? Um, well, I, I was announced recently for Mortal Kombat, so that's really exciting. Sub-Zero. Yeah, for Sub-Zero. <laughs> oh man, that was something really, really uh, 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 
interesting to keep under wraps for two whole years. You know what I mean? And um, so that's on the horizon. Uh, I do have a couple of projects coming uh, this year, but unfortunately, I'm not allowed to talk about yet. Okay. Uh, but but you know, they're they're for uh, they're for really exciting uh, IPs, and I can't wait to talk about them. Um, of course, Bungo Street Dogs is still happening. You know, that's the happening currently. Yes, that's right. Uh, <laughs> he's he's still in his prison cell, so that's really fun. And of course, Shibuya is right around the corner, which I am not spiritually ready for. I'm trying to be, but it's you know it's rough. And it's hard to even talk about for people who haven't read the manga, right? Like, how do you prepare them for something like that? You uh -huh. can't really, right? So I've been telling people to get your therapy session scheduled now. Yeah. Um, before that season hits. We have, what, like two more weeks? Less than two weeks? Yeah. Oh, man. All right. We're all in for an interesting time. How about um, anything you can share about your role in Demon Slayer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I played Sanami Shinozagawa in Demon Slayer. I feel like I haven't recorded much for the show because this character doesn't come in uh, really until, like, the late game, yeah, right? Yeah. Until the last season of the yeah. show. But, oh, man, what a last season. You know, have you, I don't know if uh, anyone yeah. here's read the manga, right? Yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, and I won't spoil anything, of course, for the listeners who haven't read, but you are in for such an amazing time. Infinity Castle is unbelievable, right? Uh, if they make one more movie... It has to be something oh, Infinity yeah, Castle, definitely right? Sure. That, like, can you imagine some of that stuff on the big screen? Oh my god! Oh, it would be, it would, it would be incredible. But yeah, you're, you're, you're all, you're all in for a treat. Okay, KG. Um, how about some truly heartwarming and personal conclusions of this conversation? Uh, what message would you like to share with fans who admire your work? Oh well, that's well, that's a really sweet way to end. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, I, I all all throughout these 16, 17 years, you know, I, you guys have been nothing but kind and nice to me, and everyone who's followed my career and still says hi to me on Twitter and you know all that stuff. I really, really appreciate it, and it warms my heart. So thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. You know, I hope you really, I hope you enjoy the stuff that's coming up in the horizon, and I hope. I have the privilege and honor of entertaining you guys for years to come. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, KG. Oh, KG, also, I have a little gift for you. Mm. A little treat for you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you. Oh, candies for your trip. Oh, <laughs> I will eat them. I'm going to get fat. Thank you so much. Hopefully, it doesn't get you fat. <laughs> Ooh, it looks, oh, it's strawberries, too. Strawberries and skills. I love strawberries. Thank you thank so much. You.